Okay, here's another fairly classic question. Um, so we have two blocks that are sliding along uh, definitely a frictionless surface. So we're not going to have to worry about friction there. Um, actually, this one is at rest initially. It has a spring attached to it. This one is initially moving at three meters per second. They collide with one another. And we have two questions. One is, what is the maximum compression of the spring? And two is, what is the speed of each block, or really the velocity of each block after they separate? So obviously, let's take on number one first. Um, the key to solving that question is knowing how fast are they going when the maximum compression occurs. And not really talking about a specific number here. I'm talking about relative to each other. So it turns out that the maximum compression occurs when they have the same speed as each other. And if you think about it, that makes sense. If the one in the back has more speed than the one in the front, then this one is still catching up to that one and the spring is still compressing. On the other hand, uh, if the one in the back has less speed than the one in the front, then the one in the front is moving away from the one in the back and the spring is expanding. So the moment that the spring is as compressed as it's ever going to be is as this speed in the back gets smaller and smaller and smaller and this speed in the front gets bigger and bigger and bigger, at some point those two speeds are equal to each other. And when the two speeds are equal to each other, that's when the maximum compression occurs. So that's what we're going to solve for. We're going to do a momentum problem. So uh, I'm going to look at the momentum before the collision. So we have a, a two kilogram block going three meters per second, and we have a five kilogram block at rest. And then after the collision, we're looking for that spot when they have the same speed as one another. And so I'm going to have two times that final speed plus five times that exact same final speed. So this is mathematically very easily easy. We end up with an answer of six sevenths meters per second. That's how fast they're going when they happen to be moving at exactly the same speed as one another. And just as a side note, um, when two objects are moving at exactly the same speed as one another, that's the same situation as if they were stuck together, permanently stuck together. If two things are stuck together, they're always going to move the same speed as each other. When two things are stuck together, that is the definition of a perfectly inelastic collision. And one of the things that happens in a perfectly inelastic collision is as much kinetic energy as possible turns into some other form of energy. And in this case, it's turning into the compression of the spring. So the stuck together situation, the situation where they have the same speed as one another, is the situation where the maximum amount of kinetic energy is turning into some other form of energy. In this case, it's compressing the spring. OK, now that we know what that speed is, we can use the law of conservation of energy, or what I like to call UQUAQ. So before the, before the collision, um, the only type of energy we have is the kinetic energy of the incoming block. And so that's 1 half mv squared. Uh, we're not going to worry about the w here because there's no friction. We always assume that springs are ideal, which means there's no losses to heat or friction due to the spring. Uh, so we don't have any non-conservative forces. So the only energy before the collision is 1 half mv squared. Um, at the moment of maximum compression, certainly there's elastic potential energy. So that's 1 half kx squared, and x is what we're looking for. But don't forget that this thing doesn't just sit here at rest. Since it's frictionless, the moment this one starts to touch it, they both start to move. So there's kinetic energy at this moment, and they're moving this fast. That's why we calculated that number. So I'm going to do 1 half uh, 5 plus 2, because they're together with the same speed, times 6 sevenths squared. And that's the formula that I have to solve for x. And uh, let me do that and find out what the answer is. So this side of the equation, let's see, 9. Well, it's 9. And uh, this over here is going to be, let's see, 6 sevenths uh, times 7 uh, divided by 2. I'm afraid I forgot something. Let me try that again. 6 sevenths. I have to square that. Uh, and then multiply by 7, and then divide by 2. Okay, so 2.57. Uh, uh, and so I'm going to subtract that from the other side, which was 9. 
whoops, I just made a mistake. Sorry for the delay here. Try this again. Nine and then six sevenths squared times seven divided by two. Now I'm going to subtract that. That's the number I needed. Then I'm going to multiply by two and then I'm going to divide by 1120 and I'm going to take the square root and that is the answer that I was looking for. X equals 0 0.107 meters. So that is the maximum compression of the spring, 0 0.107 meters. And that answers our first question. Now, what about the second question? What is the speed of each block after they separate? Well, let me uh, grab another page here. We can look at that from a momentum point of view because uh, you know the initial block had a mass of 2 kilograms, had a speed of 3. Uh, the other block had a mass of 5 and a speed of 0. So now we're saying after they actually bounce apart, what are their velocities? Well, that's going to give us two unknowns. So we have the two kilogram block times its unknown velocity and the five kilogram block times its unknown velocity. So from the momentum equation, that's what we get, and we get two unknowns. So we obviously need another equation. Well, because this involves a spring, it's a perfectly elastic collision, and there are no non-conservative forces. So we can also see what happens when we try uckluck. So again, uh, before the collision, we have 1 half 2 times 3 squared. That's the kinetic energy of the incoming block. The other block has zero kinetic energy. Afterwards, we have 1 half 2 times v at a squared plus 1 half 5 times v at b squared. At this moment, the spring is no longer a factor because it's back in its relaxed position and they're separate from each other. So you have two equations now with the same two unknowns in them. This is solvable, but the algebra is rather messy. Um, on the AP test, I doubt that they would ask you to solve the algebra, but they might ask you to write these two equations just, just to show that you know the theory. Uh, if you're really interested in the answer, I highly recommend you go to the website Wolfram Alpha. You can type those two equations in and ask it to uh, solve it for you, and it'll do that.